Glory to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we commit this time unto you. We ask that you would speak to us and that you will change us by your spirit and by your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for causing us to hear your voice. Open our understanding. Open our ears this morning. Thank you, Father, for so doing. Hallelujah. Commit ourselves to you. Unless you speak, we have no word. And we give you the praise in advance for all that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jesus, before leaving the disciples, he made a promise. And that promise is from the Father. And we read that promise in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until, until you be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. What a promise. What a wonderful promise. Glory to God. We see here the Father is involved. He is the one who is doing the promise. Jesus is the one who is sending the promise. And the promise itself is the person and the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God, according to Act 1, verse 8. And this promise of the Father is so capital for Christianity, for all of us, for our destiny. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost involved in this one because down here on earth, there are certain things that we will not be able to face until we receive the power of the Holy Ghost. There are situations, circumstances, we will be facing adversities where it will take the intervention from heaven. And God knowing our limitation and our weaknesses as way before, even in old time, established that he will have a covenant in which this promise will be fulfilled. And we can see that covenant according to Isaiah 59, verse 20 to 21. According to Isaiah 59, we read, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, the Redeemer, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, Jacob said the Lord, As for me, this is my covenant with them, said the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Glory to God. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is the, the, the announcement of the covenant that is to come. And that covenant will come, as we have seen it in verse 20, through a redeemer. He said, the redeemer shall come. The, and the Redeemer shall come. And those that will turn from transgression. See? So the Redeemer, we know, we know who is that Redeemer. And those that will turn from transgression, we are involved in it. And the new covenant that will come in power involve the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Not just for ourselves, but even for our descendants. So that's the only covenant where we see in the Old Testament the Spirit and the Word being promised by God himself. Hallelujah. 
So this is wonderful, this is precious, and this is to be coming to us through the Redeemer. And we can see that the Redeemer has come, and he has redeemed us. According to Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14, Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us, glory to God, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hung on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit that we will receive will be through faith. We know the blessing of Abraham, the eternal life that will come through the seed of Abraham, which, which is Christ, according to verse 16. And that's the blessing that will come to all the families of the earth. And uh, added to that blessing, we have the promise of the Spirit. And the promise of the Spirit will come through faith. And faith, that faith, is based on the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. On the word of God concerning the promise of the Spirit, concerning the Spirit of God, God has made so many uh, declarations tied to the coming of the Spirit. And we need to take these declarations and believe them and, de and confess them and stand upon them, meditate them, pray them. This is how we enter into the reception of the promise of the Spirit. We have to believe. And that faith is not just um, the, that contemplative attitude of believing, but also acting upon it, praying this word, meditating them, and so forth. So that's what we want to do in order to enter the, the basic fundamental criteria that will qualify us to receive the promise of the Spirit. There's one condition, one key condition that Jesus himself applied before leaving the disciples, before even announcing all these promises. He said it in, in Luke 24, verse 45. The Bible we read, Luke 24, verse 45, the Bible said that Christ has opened, he has opened their understanding, he has opened their spiritual and their spirit man to be able to understand, that they may understand the scriptures. He has opened their spirit man that they will be able to understand. So it's important in order to receive the, the promise and the fulfillment of that promise, that our spirit man be open to it. You know, the devil, in the contrary, he has the tendency of closing the spirit man of people, their understanding. According to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4, the Bible said, Apostle Paul was speaking, 2 Corinthians 4, Verse 3 and 4. But if our gospel is hid, be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. And why they are lost? In whom the God of this world, the devil, has blinded the mind. See the closing, closing of the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the devil is in the business of closing the minds, of preventing the people from receiving the, 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 the promises, the gospel, the light, from receiving the word. He's closing the mind. Close the spirit man. But God, Jesus, opened their spirit man in order for them to be able to understand the scriptures by which they, they will be able to receive the promise of the Spirit. So 
This is where we want to uh, bring six point to you. Uh, six point to help us having to get our spirit man open so that the promise will be able to receive it, the fusion of the spirit and the closing with the power. So the first point is, the first point is that in the promise in Luke 24 verse 49, uh, we have to take this into account. It's very important. In Luke 24, 49. In the promise, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high, from on high, from on high. It's not coming from down here. There is, God has planned it in such a way that we will receive an intervention from on high. And this is where God the Father is. And Jesus has already said that when we pray in Matthew 6 verse 9, Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, Jesus indicated that after this matter, manner, therefore, pray, our Father, which are in heaven, which are in heaven, allow be thy name. So the Father is on the throne in heaven. So we must be looking toward the one who has made the promise, who is in heaven. The Son, who is the one who sent the Holy Spirit, is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. We can see that. In Acts chapter 2, verse 33, when he went in heaven, he sat at the right hand of God the Father. Acts chapter 2, verse 33, we read, Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which he now see and hear. So Jesus when he went into heaven, he sat at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. This is clear. And we have so many verses speaking about that. And the Holy Spirit will come from heaven to tell you that we have needs down here. And I can say spiritual needs. That it's only the intervention of the Holy Spirit that can satisfy these needs. Only what heaven will do down here can satisfy these needs. And we need to be conscious of that. And because of this truth, inwardly we have to be turned up, down up. We have to be turned to our heaven. Because this is from where? Our supply will come. There is no supply in the creation for us to satisfy our spiritual needs. They will come from heaven. So, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, Apostle Paul is giving a precious instruction here. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Apostle Paul said, that if ye then be risen with Christ, as we are, seek those things which are above, above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. So that's an apostolic instruction to the church. And we who have been risen with Christ, we must be inwardly turned up, looking up, Toward God, toward the Father, toward the Son, the Father who promised, the Son who is the executor, and the Holy Spirit, the person that should come to us. So that's the first uh, fundamental element, element that will help us have to get our spirit man open for the effusion of the Holy Ghost and the closing of the power. 
we have to make a shifting inside of us. Instead of being earthen bound inside, we have to be turned up toward the, those, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost that can help us, that can supply the power, close us with power. Hallelujah. So that's the first element, the first one to help us to have our spirit man open for the effusion of the Holy Ghost. The second one, the second is the person uh, of the Holy Ghost himself which is to come uh, according to Act 1 verse 8. The power will come upon us after first after the Holy Ghost, the coming of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So that person, the Holy Ghost who is coming, we have to have in our spirit man the consciousness of his personality. But you shall receive power. You shall. That's in, the, in a certain future. After. So, so the shall is after that the Holy Ghost, the person of the Holy Ghost, is come upon us. Hallelujah. So we need to value that person. We need to know the, 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 the person who is coming is so crucial to us, so irreplaceable, that we have to uh, appreciate him and appreciate his presence that is to come. We have to love that person. We have to be welcoming the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And uh, we have to be um, express, uh, expressing ourselves, meaning we have to say it to him, we have to speak it out. We have to conduct ourselves in a, in a way that is pleasing to him. We have to uh, uh, avoid grieving him or blocking his move and so forth. We have to be concerned about the person of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. In order to keep our spirit man open for the effusion and for closing of the power, there is a, an attitude that we should have, a correct attitude, a reverential attitude to the person of the Holy Spirit, as well as to the Father and the Son. So that will be the second one, the second that will help us to have our spirit man open to receive. The third one is concerning the magnitude the infinite magnitude of the power of the Holy Ghost, the omnipotence of the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they put their, uh, all the divine ability to work, to move in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, the power of the Holy Ghost has no limit. There is nothing in the creation that can be compared to the power of the Holy Ghost. And we must understand that, they, therefore, that there is nothing that can oppose the power of the Holy Ghost, no adversity, that can withstand the power of the Holy Ghost. And there is nothing impossible to the Holy Spirit, to the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing can be impossible to the power of the Holy Ghost. We, are, we, see, we can see it when the angel came to Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Uh, the angel told Mary that with God, for with God, Nothing shall be impossible. Glory to God. And the, for with God is explained by the verse 35. Luke 1, 35. 
to Mary. Mary was complaining, uh, not complaining, but she wanted to know how this can take place. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. So when he said, with God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest. Hallelujah. To show that there is nothing impossible to the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And the, another aspect of the power of the Holy Ghost is that the, the power of the Holy Ghost can take, can accelerate any work. The work that should be taking 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, the Holy Ghost by his power can perform it in few minutes, in few hours, in few days. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost is faster and, and, and quicker than anything else. It can speed up any process. So, you see, we mean that it's not a waste of time. It's not being late when we are seeking the Holy Spirit and the power. Because everything can be accelerated by the power of the Holy Ghost. You remember even in old time when Ahab went for, uh, before Elijah, Ahab took off to go to Jezreel in, uh, in the chariot before Elijah. And Elijah was still praying. But when the Spirit came upon Elijah, Elijah arrived in Jezreel before Ahab. So the seeking the power of the Holy Ghost or waiting on the Spirit of God is not a waste of time. It can speed up everything. And the fourth point is according to Matthew 5 verse 6, uh, Jesus said that those who are hungry, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. Blessed are they which, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Righteousness is a, the right standing before God. And we have received that standing from Christ. It's the way Christ is righteous in the eyes of God that has been imparted to us. And we should be hungry and thirsty to walk in that righteousness, to stay in that righteousness, to continue to persevere in that righteousness. So Jesus promised that when we are seeking that spiritual blessing, we are after that spiritual blessing, we are hungry and thirsty after that spiritual blessing, the, we shall be filled. Meaning spiritual blessings cause our spirit man to be open for the effusion of the Holy Ghost, to be filled with the Spirit of God. To be filled is here, to receive the Spirit of God and the power. So uh, uh, we can see the details of it as we are saying, in Isaiah 44, verse 3. Isaiah uh, 44, verse 3, clarified this point. He said, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. So you see, Jesus said those who are hungry and thirsty. So this one is thirsty, and the thirst is the condition here to receive the water to be poured upon. And that water, he said, and floods upon the dry ground, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. So that water is the spirit. And my blessing upon thy offspring. So that water is the spirit which is the blessing. And the thirst, being thirsty, being a dry ground, 
Hallelujah. This is the condition of our, of our heart for us to be able to receive the effusion of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus clearly said the Spirit will be poured upon those who are, who are seeking the spiritual blessing of the Holy Ghost, the effusion, who are thirsty for that, who are hungry for that, they shall be filled. So that means our spirit man must be, must be thirsty, must be seeking the effusion of the Holy Ghost. More than what we can seek or be thirst after on, in the creation. In the creation, we have other blessings, but these blessings should not overtake the blessings of the spiritual blessing of the effusion of the Holy Ghost. To summarize, therefore, the spirit man that will be open to receive the effusion may seek and value the spiritual blessings more than the physical blessings or material blessings. The spiritual blessings must must be much, much more important in our eyes, in our spirit man. We must be putting the spiritual blessing above the physical blessings. Hallelujah. This is where our spirit man will be open. And the fifth one now is that um, Jesus himself said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, that the self is a hindrance, is an obstacle that we need to re deny. We need to deny the right of the self. So in Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So the self that is making that see a barrier for uh, from receiving the the spirit of god the effusion of the holy ghost must be denied is right this we must empty be empty from the self of the self we must empty the more we are empty of the self the more we become dry ground and the more we can receive the infilling, the outpouring, the effusion of the Holy Ghost. So that's this. That's the fifth one. And the, the, the next one, the last one, which is found in Luke 11, verse 13. In Luke 11, verse 13, um, Jesus, it is written, If ye then, being evil, this is Jesus speaking, know how to give good gift into your children. You see, uh, before he said, if uh, your child asks uh, a bread, you not give him a, a stone. Or if he asks you uh, some, uh, some other things, you do not give him a... He said, a son shall ask a bread of any of you that is a father. Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? No. Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? No. So Jesus therefore said, since a human being which, which is far, far less good than, than God, since a human being can choose good gift for his children, how much more God who is infinitely good than a human being, will give good gift to his children. Meaning that if we ask the Holy Ghost, as it is uh, suggested here, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? If we ask the Holy Spirit, 
We must know that the Father will give us the Holy Spirit. He will not allow any other thing, any evil spirit to come to us. It's impossible. God is good to us. He's good even before we know it. And while we're yet sinners, he demonstrates his love to us. According to Romans 5 verse 9, that, that, that Christ died for us while we're yet sinners. So God is on our side. The Father wants our good, and he will always give us good things. He's good in himself. He's graceful. He's uh, merciful. And he will always answer us by giving us the Holy Spirit when we ask the Holy Spirit. So, uh, we see that the effusion of the Holy Spirit is based on different uh, aspects of the Word of God that allow, these allow our spirit man to be open to receive that promise by meditating these, by declaring, by praying them, we prefer our spirit man, we open our spirit man to the effusion of the Holy Spirit. We must yearn for it. Hallelujah. So we want to pray. We want to pray. Father, we thank you so much. For you are the one way before we even come to know and know your grace and your love and be transformed. You are the one who have promised a covenant in which you will give us through the Redeemer your word and your spirit forever, even to our descendants. And as the Redeemer has come in the person of your son, Jesus Christ, and has redeemed us and, uh, so that we may receive the blessing of Abraham and the promise of the Spirit by faith, Lord, today we understand that this is the focus that you want us to take, to, to, to be directed to this one promise so that in all the last days we may continue to receive the effusion of the Holy Ghost and be closed with power. So from now on, Father, we pray that we will not be distracted from what you have valued so much and Jesus has committed himself so much in paying all that it will take for us to be vessels that can carry the Spirit of God and the fire of God, that can carry and be close with the power of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to be with us, to make us do the extraordinary, even the greater works, to change our character, to be confirmed to the image of Christ, to take us from ordinary to the extraordinary. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us, guiding us the way we should go. Without you, we understand we can't do nothing. Without you, we are lost. We thank you for causing all the provision of God through Christ to be manifested in our lives. So from now on, we believe and trust you that we shall walk in your power. We shall walk in your guidance. We shall be filled by you. And we pray right now that everyone that is watching, may the power of God close you. May you receive right now the effusion of the Holy Ghost. Father, fill everyone right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Close your people right now. 
Let your fire come upon each one right now. Close us with your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for so doing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to pray with those who want to surrender their life to Christ. Yes. Declare with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that I'm a sinner. And if I was dead in my sin, I would have gone to hell. But because of your love for me and because of your grace, you came on the cross, you pay the price for me, you redeem me from all condemnation. And you even died, laid down your life for me. And I thank you and acknowledge your sacrifice, the blood that you shed, your life. The third day, God has raised you from the dead. And you are sitting at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for me. So from this day on, Lord, I open my heart to you. And I invite you to come into my heart. And I receive you right now as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me a child of God, a member of the family of God, born again. And from this day on, Lord, I want to know you more and to serve you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We continue to invite you to what the Spirit of God is doing at the mountain of prayer 24-7 that he has established. And we continue to bring the nations and together in the unity of the Spirit, we are traveling, praying for the revelation of Jesus Christ to the souls, the billions of souls around the world who are still in darkness, that the Spirit of God will reveal to them the Lord Jesus Christ and convict them to repent. And we pray against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. We pray for the revival of the church, the empowerment of the church to be able to declare the gospel with demonstration and to testify effectively that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. So we ask and invite you to continue to come to the mountain of prayer. Let us all over the world come together so that the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who shed his blood, he receive the reward of his suffering. In Jesus' name. God bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And the Lord give you peace. Shalom. Until next time. Bless you.